Hi everyone, my name is Milan Shah, and today I'll be presenting on accelerating random forest classification on GPU and FPGA. My co-authors on this work are Rhys Neff, Han Cheng Wu, Marco Minitoli, Antonino Tomeo, and Michaela Becky. So let's start with an understanding of the problem. Random forests, or RFs, are a machine learning model composed of many decision trees. And in this work, we focus on random forests used for classification tasks. RFs are used in a range of applications, including malware identification, cancer prediction, and banking fraud detection. Decision trees are trained and grown using a training set of data and a test set of queries, also called samples, that is fed through each decision tree of a forest. There are many existing approaches to acceleration of RF training, but our work focuses on the testing phase, also called the RF classification phase. So during the RF classification phase, a single decision tree takes a query or sample as input and returns a decision stored in a leaf node. Since we focus on classification, decision trees return a classification decision for a query. And in this illustration, we can see that a query Q in this instance is characterized by an array of values that we call the feature array. The dimensionality of the query corresponds to how many features there are, and in this case is N. Each element of the array can be accessed at various stages of decision tree traversal and is compared against the threshold value stored in nodes to determine the path to traverse. As mentioned previously, a decision tree is part of a larger group of trees that compose the random forest. Each tree is typically unique and can lead to varying classification decisions. And a query is sent as input to each decision tree in the forest. So for S queries and T trees, there are S times T tree traversals that take place. And lastly, there is a majority vote that takes place across all the trees to determine the final classification result for query Q. And in this example, since the majority of trees return a value of 1, the final classification decision is class 1 for query Q. So we know that there exists a degree of implicit parallelism in RF classification. The S times T traversals that take place can be done independently making RF classification a strong candidate for acceleration on GPU and FPGA. For these platforms, however, there's issues with memory access patterns and storage bottlenecks that can reduce the throughput of this parallelism. So first off, trees are irregularly shaped and thus can lead to irregular memory accesses. For GPU, this can mean low degrees of memory coalescing and for both platforms, high degrees of pointer chasing. Traversal also leads to control divergence between threads and work items, which can negatively impact throughput. And lastly, for trees to achieve a relatively high accuracy on data sets, any limits on tree size to meet on-chip memory requirements must be lifted. So next we'll take a look at two existing approaches to see how RF classification is commonly implemented. The first implementation we observe is using a compressed sparse row or CSR format to store trees. Each node has three attributes, the node's ID, the feature that the node inspects from a query, and the threshold value of the node. The latter two arrays called feature ID and value can be indexed using the node's ID. For CSR, two additional arrays are used that correspond to the children of each node. One array, children array, holds the node IDs of children, and another array called children array index indexes the first array based on a node's ID. So using CSR, traversal from one node to one of its children requires two memory accesses, one of which is indirect. As you can imagine, this procedure can be costly, especially in a parallel platform. But CSR does not restrict the depth of a tree and thus RF classification with CSR format can use trees of any size. So let's take a look at an example with node 3. So to find node 3's attributes, we go to index 3 of the feature ID and value arrays, and we can see that node 3 accesses the eighth feature 
uh, or the feature stored at index eight and has a threshold value of 5.4. So the pointer to the IDs of node three's children is at index three of uh, children array index array. And we follow this pointer to children array, where we find that the children of node three are four and seven, which correspond correctly to the decision tree on the right. The second existing approach we note is using trees that are small and allocated with empty nodes to ensure completeness. In other works, smaller trees are used to ensure that the entire tree can fit into the on-chip memory to allow for fast memory accesses. Enforcing completeness to trees, as seen in the right figure, allows for nodes to be accessed with arithmetic indexing instead of having an additional indirect memory access. For instance, the left child of node i in a complete tree is stored at index 2 times i, and the right child is at index 2 times i plus 1. The main drawback to this approach is that trees cannot be deep, since tree, tree size grows exponentially with depth and on-chip memory is relatively small and fixed. Without the ability to have deep trees, the accuracy of RFs on various datasets will be severely limited. QML, an NVIDIA implementation of RF classification that we later use as baseline, uses a complete tree approach with trees not loaded into on-chip memory. To address the shortcomings of, both, uh, of uh, both approaches while exploiting the benefits of each, we propose a hierarchical tree format in this work. The hierarchical format introduces a concept of subtrees, which are portions of a decision tree that are made complete. Subtrees are connected to one another using a CSR format and are limited in size by a maximum subtree depth parameter. Accessing nodes within a subtree requires only arithmetic indexing in the same fashion as the small and complete tree approach enabling less indirect memory accesses. And once traversal reaches a subtree boundary, CSR index arrays are accessed to enable arbitrary tree depths. So let's take a look at how the tree on the left would be stored in hierarchical format. So decision trees in the hierarchical format are represented by five arrays, connection offset, subtree connection, subtree node offset, feature ID, and value. Feature ID and value, as we, uh, if you recall, store Nord, store, store node attributes with nodes renumbered according to their breadth first search position in the subtree. And nodes of a subtree are laid out contiguously in memory. Connection offset points to the location in the subtree connection array where a given subtree's connections begin. And subtree connection array associates leaf nodes with the next subtrees to traverse to. And finally, the subtree node offset marks the starting index of node attributes for a given subtree. So let's use node five of subtree zero as an example. To find the node attributes, we access the subtree node offset array at index zero, since this node is in subtree zero. The value stored here points to the beginning of all node attributes of subtree zero. We then add five to this index and arrive at the location of node five's attributes. Since we must continue traversal beyond node five, we have to access the next subtree IDs from the CSR arrays. The connection offset for subtree zero is zero, and we access index four and five of subtree connection, since node five is the third node in the bottom level of subtree zero, and the previous two nodes can be connected to up to two subtrees. So this format opens up the possibility of various tree traversal methods. In this work, we propose and test three kernels that can be ported to both GPU and FPGA. These formats leverage the data locality of subtrees and conduct traversal in different fashions. For the next few slides, please note that subtrees and function calls in blue refer to off-chip operations, while green refer to on-chip operations. The first traversal method we propose is the independent kernel, which directly maps queries to threads or work items. The pseudocode on the right is parallelized at the outer for loop level, and queries are free to traverse trees and subtrees independently with no synchronization barriers. 
All subtrees are stored in off-chip memory, so any caching of tree data is handled entirely by hardware. We note that this method of traversal can lead to divergence between queries in their traversal and does not leverage on-chip memory explicitly. Secondly, we propose the collaborative kernel, which strongly, which strongly enforces synchronization. Batches of subtrees are loaded collaboratively into on-chip memory, and queries are then mapped to threads or work items and traverse the subtrees loaded into on-chip memory. If the subtree is not on a query's path, the subtree is not traversed, corresponding to the conditional statement in the innermost loop of the pseudocode on the right. The tree diagram illustrates how all queries check every subtree of a tree, and all subtrees, regardless if they're on any query's path, are loaded into on-chip memory. Synchronization barriers are placed between switching from one batch of subtrees to the next and from one tree to the next. And while this method of traversal can leverage fast memory accesses, there may be unnecessary work done in loading all nodes of every subtree into on-chip memory. The hybrid kernel is the last traversal method we propose, and it attempts to bridge the independent and collaborative kernels. So during traversal, the only subtree that is guaranteed to be traversed by all queries is the very first subtree, which we also call the root subtree. And thus, the only subtree that is loaded in the on-chip memory collaboratively is this root subtree. The root subtree typically is also the densest part of the tree, since deeper regions of a tree tend to have more leaves. And in our experiments, we explore the effect of increasing the root subtree size. After loading the root subtree, queries are free to access and traverse subsequent subtrees without synchronization. These subsequent subtrees remain in off-chip memory. A synchronization barrier is placed at the end of each iteration of the outer for loop. So for GPU, there are several effects that arise from each of the kernels when implemented. Pros and cons are highlighted in green and red, respectively. The independent kernel doesn't force all subtrees to be accessed, which can be beneficial if subtrees are not visited by any query. However, there's a high degree of branch divergence between threads in the same warp, since they can advance to different subtrees and trees without synchronization. The collaborative kernel loads all subtrees into shared memory on GPU, which can increase memory coalescing and allow for higher bandwidth memory accesses. There can be wasted work and low streaming multiprocessor utilization when subtrees aren't accessed frequently. And threads in the same block have to wait to advance from one subtree batch to the next, leading to many wasted cycles. The hybrid kernel can increase memory coalescing, but primarily for the root subtree. Since the root subtree tends to be the densest portion of the tree, however, there can be a significant reduction in global memory reads. So FPGA has its own set of considerations when implementing similar kernel structures. From a high level, FPGA exploits pipeline level parallelism. Since kernels written in a high level language like C++ are synthesized as pipeline stages in hardware. To achieve high throughput, we have to reduce the initiation interval, which is the smallest number of cycles that can pass before another item can enter the pipeline. Reducing this interval can increase pipeline utilization, and by replicating pipelines, also called compute units, we can increase throughput. So like GPU, the independent kernel doesn't force all subtrees to be accessed, which can be beneficial if subtrees aren't visited by any query. There is, however, the high cost of initiation interval due to a read after write dependency between each loop iteration when traversing the kernel. The feature information is cached in the FPGA for each individual traversal, but this ultimately makes external RAM latency for the tree traversal itself the main bottleneck. The collaborative kernel loads each subtree into block RAM and ultra, ultra RAM on the FPGA's fabric and processes every query, inserting empty cycles where the query is not pre present in the current subtree being processed. This can allow for extremely fast random memory accesses 
hence the low initiation interval of three cycles. However, like GPU, this can lead to wasted work, as the workload distribution on subtrees at greater depth in the tree have fewer and fewer work items, leading to empty cycles. The hybrid kernel can take advantage of the guaranteed full workload utilization in the root subtree and change to a more individualized query traversal after the root subtree has been processed. This leads to fewer total external memory accesses and therefore stalls, but increases kernel complexity, which can negatively impact spatial parallelism in the form of compute unit replication, leading to fewer total compute units that are able to be instantiated and a lower clock frequency to meet more strict timing requirements. So to test the effects of the hierarchical format in kernels on RF classification, we train Forrest on three machine learning data sets from the UCI machine learning repository. Forrests are trained using the scikit-learn Python library and then converted to hierarchical format. And you'll note our hardware environment setup at the bottom left of this slide. Since there are many parameters used as input to train RFs, we focus on two that have the greatest influence on forest size, the number of trees in the forest and the maximum depth that trees can be grown to. We target high accuracy combinations of these parameters for each of the data sets. Combinations that correspond to green regions of the heat map on the right. Forest size to meet these high accuracy targets is fixed at 100 trees and tree depths vary from 30 to 40 for cover type, 15 to 25 for SUSE, and 25 to 35 for Higgs. We additionally test out two baselines, a CSR tree traversal and QML, which if you'll remember is NVIDIA's own machine learning library that implements RF classification. We first observe the memory footprint, footprint of the hierarchical format compared to CSR. These plots show the ratio of the hierarchical memory footprint to CSR's footprint. For each cluster of bars, maximum subtree depth is varied from four to six to eight. Across all three datasets, we can see that the hierarchical format does indeed occupy more memory and higher maximum subtree depth increases memory footprint. There are some exceptions, specifically for lower maximum tree and subtree depths, where the hierarchical format occupies less space than CSR. Additionally, we'll see that this footprint is greatly outweighed by speed up. So these plots report the performance results of GPU. For both platforms, we plot the results of the independent and hybrid kernels with varying maximum subtree depths. The collaborative kernel results are omitted since this kernel typically performed 10 to 20 times worse than the independent kernel. For GPU, we plot the speedup over CSR of the two kernels along with QML speedup over CSR. Addition, actual times for CSR traversal on GPU were about half a second for cover type, two seconds for SUSE, and five seconds for Higgs. The GPU hybrid kernel is generally the best performing traversal method, achieving up to a nine times speed up over CSR and a two times speed up over QML. Across most tree depths tested, the hybrid kernel with a maximum subtree depth of eight can outperform QML. An increasing maximum subtree depth improves performance for all hierarchical kernels. These plots report the performance results for FPGA the execution time is reported since CSR baseline on FPGA didn't always terminate. GPU typically performs between 30 to 80 times faster than FPGA for RF classification. While the hybrid version for FPGA performs better in single compute unit versions, the fully parallelized versions show the independent kernel winning out as performing compute unit replication on the hybrid kernel leads to fewer total compute units and a lower frequency than the independent kernel. Increasing the maximum subtree depth follows the same trend as GPU in performance improvements at the cost of a higher memory footprint. As mentioned before, the root subtree is the densest part of a tree since most leaf nodes tend to be in deeper levels. 
Because of this, the root subtree can be partitioned to be a larger portion of the tree without needing many empty nodes to be allocated. Our results show that while increasing the root subtree depth, RSD in the figures, can be beneficial to performance, improvement is generally meager. So in conclusion, for higher accuracy targets in RF classification, the hierarchical traversal format and kernel can achieve five to nine times speed up over CSR and up to two times speed up over QML. FPGA hierarchical traversal, while slower than GPU, can outperform CSR up to 109.5 times. And increasing subtree and root subtree depth improve classification time. Lastly, I'd like to thank the National Science Foundation awards listed on this slide, as well as the US Department of Energy Exagraph Project and ADOX5 Project at PNNL.